So today we're gonna to take a quick look at the Cerec Prime Mill and do a basic training for you on this. If you've used an MCX or an MCXL, not a whole lot has uh, changed in regard to the basic principles of using a milling chamber. I would say the biggest difference would be the burr management system. So we'll spend a little bit more time on that. Uh, but to start, we'll just look into the drawer here. So in the drawer, we have uh, all of our burrs as well as the two wrenches that you likely have with your MCX or MCXL. Um, the little wrench here, you can see it's triangular in shape, is used for every other burr except for the big carbides, the 2.5 and the, and the PMA carbide. Uh, those use the big wrench, and you can see the big wrench is square in shape. And if you look at the 2.5 carbide, you can see that it is the end of it is square in shape there as well. So hopefully you can see that on camera. So the little wrench is for everything except for uh, the big carbide, so the 2.5 and the PMMA. In regard to the wrench to put your block in, so we have our traditional torque, uh, torque screwdriver here. Uh, so just make sure when you're putting the block in and you're tightening the screw that you make sure you tighten it all the way till the wrench clicks to make sure that the block is in the block chuck securely. And then we also over here have our calibration set. So you can see on the calibration set there is a QR code and we'll go over that in a second. Um, but also you have your calibration pins right here. Now, if we move over to the touch panel, you can see a couple new features, one being the camera. So the camera is related to the QR code that you see here on the calibration set. Very soon, your blocks will all have this QR code on it as well. And so when you're inputting a new block, so if we hit that button, we'll be able to actually scan the QR code and it will tell the mill exactly what manufacturer the block is, what type of block it is, the size, the shape, all the information that you would input manually right now will all be delivered on a QR code very, very soon here. The other thing you see is the RFID reader. So if I grab one of the burrs here, so I'm just gonna pick up any of the burrs, gonna click into our burrs and hit scan. And I'm just gonna take the little RFID chip here. I'm gonna touch it to the panel and you can see that it reads what the burr is. So this is a 2.5. Uh, there's 99% life. So this does, this little RFID chip does uh, tell the mill exactly how much life is left on that burr. And then you can also see the lot number is here as well. So a really cool feature for real-time management of your burrs. So the other thing I, I always like to, to show is actually how to change your burr. So this is a little bit different than we've done in the past. In the past, your acquisition center has always controlled this process. Uh, but with the prime mill, the prime mill works independently of your acquisition center. And so you need to be able to change your burrs right here on the touch screen. And it's super simple. The mill's going to walk you right through it. So all I have to do is, is uh, click on one of these burrs and it's gonna take me to the burr management page. So you can see here, if you use an MCXL in the past, that I have uh, my two carbides for milling zirconia right here, and I have my two diamonds for milling uh, ceramics here, which is why this setting is called mill zirconia and grind, because with the burrs that we have in right now, we can switch between zirconia and grinding uh, without actually having to change out the burrs. But let's say we wanted to set this mill up for super fast milling. So we want a super fast mill zirconia. If I click the change button here in the bottom right, it's gonna give me a list of burr configuration options. So you can see mill zirconia and grind is what we're on right now. Uh, you can mill zirconia extra fine. We're gonna do mill zirconia super fast. So if I click on that, it's going to move the motors and it's going to now walk me through changing out the burrs. So I'm going to try to do this one-handed, so forgive me if it's a little shaky, but you can see right now it's asking us to scan a 2.5 burr. So I'm going to grab one of the 2.5 burrs and I'm gonna scan it with the QR, the, uh, the RFID reader. And you can see once I scan it, we got a green check mark and it's telling us to put the burr into that burr slot. So I come over here and I already have a burr in there. So I'm gonna grab my little wrench and I'm going to remove that one. And I'm gonna take my 2.5 burr and I'm gonna thread it in. I'm gonna grab my large torque wrench, uh, if you remember that. We use this wrench for the carbide burr. 
and I'm just gonna tighten it until it clicks, okay? And then what does it ask us to do? Insert the tools and then close the chamber door. So I'm gonna close the chamber door. And now it's gonna take us to the next step. So the next step is it wants us to scan a 1.0 CS. So I'm just gonna grab one of the burrs that kind of looks like that and scan it. And I picked up the right one. Now, if I picked up the wrong one and scanned it, we get a little error message that says, this is the burr that you scanned. It's the wrong one. Scan the 1.0 burr. But I picked up the right one, just kind of got lucky there. So we're gonna go ahead and insert this burr now. So I'm going to remove this one. And I'm gonna insert the one that I scanned. Turn it till it clicks. And then again, we're going to, as a request, close the chamber door. Okay, now it wants us to grab a 1.0 burr and scan that. So again, I'm just gonna see if I can, if I have one here, I'm going to grab it and just scan it again. You can see I got the green check mark, now the blue arrow, so it wants us to go back over here, and it wants us to put that burr in. So again, just gonna remove this one. Sorry about that. And again, close the chamber door. And we're done. So now you see it says mill super fast. And I have uh, my carbides in on both sides. And we are ready to go for super fast milling. So a fairly easy process for changing out your birds. Now, if you want to put the block in, all you have to do is hit the plus, plus uh, sign here. Now you says, see it says, uh, you know, scan the block. I don't have any blocks with the QR code, so we're just gonna go ahead and hit skip scanning. And it's gonna give us a list of manufacturers. So I'm just gonna choose Dense by Serona, Cerex Zirconia, a Mono L for a single unit and A2. And now it wants us to input our barcode. So I'm just gonna make one up And you can see now that we are ready to insert the block. So one thing I always get a question about is the barcode itself. So when we enter the barcode, you might get uh, a barcode that looks like this. So I'm just going to make one up here. So you might get a barcode that actually looks like this. You see that there's only six characters there. Every barcode uses seven characters. So it always starts with a letter like a, a, a Z. Well, it usually starts with a letter like a Z or a, a, a R or something to that effect. And then we have a total of seven characters. But on some blocks, you might see that there's only six characters like we have here. If there's only six characters, likely what you have to do is you have to hit space at the end or you might have to hit period at the end or you might have to hit dash at the end now the dash and the period would be annotated on the block uh, but if there's not a seventh character you need to put a space in at the end so just kind of put that uh in the back of your mind uh because inevitably you'll you'll come across a batch of blocks that only has six characters and you'll be wondering why it's not accepting your barcode like uh you know it'll say that uh, the value given is not a valid enlargement factor. Hit retry and then go back in and enter it with a space at the end and it will uh, resolve the issue for you. So one more thing that I wanted to show you guys was uh, the menus at the very beginning here. Let's go, just go back to the very beginning. Okay. So we have two options down here. So we have the settings button. If we go into there, the only thing you really need to know is this theme. So if you have an iPhone, you're, you're very familiar with the light and dark theme. If we click on that, we can actually switch between light and dark. So that's one thing that you might want to, uh, want to change on your own. 
But over here in the mill looking button here, if we click into that, there's a couple things I'd like to show you. So the first one is the cleaning program. If I hit run, it's gonna give us an option to do a two minute or a 15 minute cleaning program. Essentially what that is, it's a car wash. So it'll turn the water jets on and it'll spray down the inside of the chamber there. So you can do two or 15 minutes. It's a really good idea just to do that when the chamber is starting to look like mine. You know, my chamber's starting to look like it's got a lot of dust on it from milling zirconia. So it's just a good idea to do that. Sorry, these touch screens never like my, my fingers. So the next one is the cleaning position. So if I hit move, it's going to move the motors together uh, so that when I want to clean it out, like maybe I just did a cleaning cycle and I want to take, take a paper towel and dry out the chamber. So it allows me to reach in and around the motors without putting my hand through and potentially, you know, cutting myself on one of the burrs. So that's a nice little feature if you're going to be cleaning out the chamber, especially with a paper towel, uh, to be able to just bring those together and then you have full access without uh, actually cutting yourself on any of those burrs. Because the carbide burrs can be, can be kind of sharp. Uh, the water pump, uh, you don't need to, uh, you know, need to worry about that at all. Sometimes it's a good idea though, when you put, like if you just changed out the water, you just put uh, fresh water in there. When you, when you put it back in, sometimes it's a good idea just to go to water pump and hit activate. It'll, uh, it'll run the water pump and it'll um, essentially push water through the jets in the chamber and uh, you're just looking to make sure that the water is flowing steadily and there's no air bubbles left and then once that looks good then just hit the act the activate button again and it'll turn the water pump off so when it comes to the water tank if you hit change you can uh, tell it uh, if you change the water tank and if you change the filter. So it will keep track of when you've changed them. Just remember to come in here when you do change the water, change the filter to hit replace. So I'm gonna hit replace on the filter. Yes, I replaced the filter. Uh, and you can do the same thing with the water and then it'll keep track of when you actually last changed the water when you last changed the filter there. <laughs> So the next one is the suction unit filters. Uh, so that one is on your suction unit. There is a filter inside that uh, needs to be uh, changed. Um, I think it's every 100 to 120 zirconia crowns. Uh, but again, if you hit change, it will allow you to keep track of when you actually change that filter. Other than that, there's nothing else in here. So that's uh, kind of some of the features that you'd wanna know about when it comes to um, just routine maintenance and, and, and keeping, uh, keeping your mill in good, clean working order. So that's a very quick training. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, enjoy your prime mill. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love the super fast milling process um, and uh, reach out if you have any questions, but I hope that was a really good overview for you. Have a great day.